Just arrived in Marlborough, New Zealand. Came over from the North Island today. First stop was Dog Point Vineyard, an excellent producer of Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, and proves that uh, New Zealand makes uh, world-class Sauvignon Blancs on the same level with the best of Loire and uh, Bordeaux. I'm with Ivan Sutherland, the owner. Ivan, I love uh, your wines. I love your single vineyard wine. I mean, tell me a little bit about the soil and the character of wine you're trying to make here. Your wines are wines of age. We had to 2006s. They were gorgeous. So tell me about that. It's, it's really something different than what some me people may think about New Zealand wines and New Zealand wines from uh, this area. Uh, yeah, I guess it's, you know, um, with James Healy, a partner in the label, it's uh, about for us, making reasonably distinctive wines that, that have a point of difference. Uh, fundamental to that is probably um, lower cropping to get nice f fruit intensity. Uh, uh, also hand picking, so we're, we're looking to add delicacy and finesse to the wine, and we believe that does. What does that do? It's just selecting more? Uh, well, it, it's just what we're trying to do is reduce the phenolic content, that, the skin content. We're looking for purity of juice. Uh, so with controlled cropping, uh, tends into sort of leaf to fruit ratios with the canopy, because uh, it is cool climate viticulture that we're talking about here. Uh, we, we, we don't get very hot. And, and, uh, and you're saying also then there's also these uh, differences in in what's happening with the climate as well, whether there's storms, there's lots of changes. Oh, you know, the variability is, is huge. Uh, you couldn't say any one season is the same. And, and I guess James and I, and I, we've been in the game a long time now and uh, experience and, uh, with that seasonality uh, is probably uh, a big help to us. Um, I, I ke careful extraction with, uh, with pressing. And uh, I guess uh, with three other wines um, and, and wild ferments, indigenous ferments, and extended time in barrel, uh, the wine, the section 94, if you like, the alternative style, of Sauvignon Blanc, it's, it's sort of a bit out there, away from the generic style, it's more about textual complexity, palate weight. Uh, Length too. Yeah, and, that, and that's all in old oak. So we're actually using the vessel to impart a yeast influence in the wine. We're not looking at, to pick up any oak. It seems like your style is really non-interventionist. It really is just, uh, you've got great fruit and let's just keep it there. Oh, look, you know, um, as with many, many good producers, getting it right in the vineyard is, is, is primarily uh, where, where it happens. But we're, we've always been big believers in minimalistic handling, if you like, you know, just l leave it alone. So, uh, you know, t t two of the wines don't go anywhere near a tank. Uh, it's, it's just to a hopper under the press and then straight to barrel. And, uh, 18 months basically left alone. And, and you have a wide experience from the beginning almost uh, in the 70s and then you were at Cloudy Bay, so I mean you can talk from an authority with this area in New Zealand in general. Oh, and, indeed. Um, you know, um, I'm, I have an um, in-depth knowledge, if you like, of uh, the climate and the variability in the soils here. And uh, I've always been a great advocate that the, the Pinot Noir didn't it wasn't suitable on the flats. It needed to be on the clay, on the, the southern side of the valley. And the, on hills, though. On, on the hills yeah, yeah. and the nice clay slopes. So you're getting that slow evolutionary development of fruit characters. You're, you're utilising the whole season and uh, more even cropping, more even ripening. And how would you describe your pinots then? Uh, when I, 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 mean, I have my ideas, but how would you des describe them? They are subtle, but they're... And I, I don't know if they're New World or, or Burgundian. What do, you, what do you like? How do you describe um, that? Well, we're often being, you know, uh, uh, particularly the Dog Point Pinot Noir, uh, you know, comments have been made that it's very Burgundian. Look, you know, we're, we're trying to reflect what, what happens in our area. That's very red fruit. We're looking for those nice, soft, ethereal tannins. 
uh, we're very conscious that we're ac actually making a, a Pinot Noir, so we, we do want to be, you know, we want to have that primary fruit, be fruit expressive, and then to, to look at that oak component, 50% new, new oak, and, and now age of vines, we've, you know, the average age is about 18 years, and we're strong believers that age of vines has an important part to play in the structure of a wine, particularly Pinot Noir, and, uh, you know, we, we're, we're very... Uh, enthused about some of the, the, not just ours, but some of the Pinot Noirs that are coming out of Marlborough now. And we believe it's about better soil type, better aspect, better attention to detail of the viticulture, nice diversity of clones, and then the maturity of the vines are starting to show through. Well, it shows all well, thanks for the taste then. Yeah, no, no, thanks, James. It was great. <laughs> I'm here in Marlboro, New Zealand with winemaker Kevin Judd. He makes a wine called Grey Wacky. Wonderful uh, Sauvignon Blanc, intense with a minerally racy character. Chardonnay, beautiful too, white Burgundy character. But the thing that really blew me away was the Pinot Noir, where you have this intense fruit, but it's not overly fruity, particularly on the palate. There's this tension to its structure. Is that really Marlboro? Pinot Noir, what's happening here? Because people always think of Sauvignon uh, Blanc here. Absolutely. Well, um, I think we're a little bit slow in Marlborough um, when the Pinot Noir stakes. A lot of the clones in, that we had in the early days were more suited for sparkling wine, and and it was a lot of it was planted in the really stony soils, which have proven not to be so suitable. But now that we've we discovered discovered the hill the um, well the hillsides and the um, and the valleys and the southern what we call the southern valleys, which are um, a lot more sort of clay soils. Um, now that we've got the right clones, and, and now that we've also got a bit of vine age, we're starting to produce some fantastic Pinot Noir fruit. And you're using uh, Dijon and uh, Pomar clones, though? Uh, yep. Um, I, I, I like five. that character where uh, some New Zealand Pinot Noirs can be really, really fruity up front, but your wines, you get the fruity nose, but then it's quite complex, floral, tea leaf, some, you know, like what you'd be thinking in Burgundy, then you get the intense fruit, but at the same time, you get that creamy acidity, beautiful tan, and it's all, all pulled together, as some people say, sort of corseted, beautiful. And that's really just the style of fruit you're getting out of, the, the type of fruit you're getting out of here. Well, the, the, the vineyards that I'm, I'm sourcing from are um, about 12 years old. They're really um, intensely farmed. The uh, you know, crop is kept to a minimum, all the usual, the usual canopy management things. 100% uh, wild yeast fermentation, which helps give, uh, I think, some structure and some weight and some sort of savouriness to the wine. 20% um, whole bunch in the fermentation, which also adds another another dimension. So we're starting with a really excellent raw, raw. You know, the grapes are fantastic um, with very intense varietal expression, but we're also using some some quite old old world winemaking techniques, I guess. You've been making wine in New Zealand for a long time. People like to call you. A pioneer. But actually, you oh. started when in se in in the early eighties or set or late seventies. I was called a veteran the other day, which really got on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> um, I came to New Zealand in nineteen eighty three, and um, well, people I, forget how. I mean, well, the history of, of winemaking in New Zealand is, is fairly recent. I mean, well, when I, when I first arrived here. Um, it was sort of at the beginning of the of the, of the of the modern New Zealand wine industry, and it was so I've seen a lot of changes. And it's been an incredible journey. And where do you think it's going now? What what do you see? I think you worked at Cloudy Bay. You're here making, you know, beautiful, uh, structured and yet elegant wines. What what where do you think it's going? What's the you'll keep moving towards Pinot and Chardonnay, or what do you think? Um. I think as I, th I think in Marlborough we are going to see more definitely see more focus on on varieties other than Sauvignon Blanc and um, I mean I think Marlborough has absolutely cemented itself in the in the world now as a a premium producer of Sauvignon Blanc and and um, we've, we've we've got sort of a a uh, situation where the people, where the producers are producing a uh, quite an interesting range of styles of Sauvignon Blanc now. Um, there's still, there's still, um, still perhaps more diversity to, to be achieved in the category, but I think there's, there's, 
more potential, or there's huge potential to explore the other varieties in this district. Because all the things that make that um, allow allow us to make fantastic Sauvignon Blancs are um, equally transferable to all the aromatic whites and, and also the Pinot Noir. I mean, we get incredible intensity of flavour in, um, in in the aromatic varieties. It's a combination, I think, of as, as you, you've observed, the incredible light that we get here. This this, this incredible um, amount of you know high sunshine hours, and and very clear um, and powerful UV, um, light. But but we don't get heat. No, that's the. Yeah, we, it's deceiving. It, I can tell you, I was outside for the last couple of days and in the vineyards, and uh, I can feel. Being, I can, I'm burnt. I'm like a bit red. <laughs> but it's very cool. You know, you're freezing still. It's crazy. Mm. It's sort of like skiing or something. Snow skiing. Well, it very rarely gets above 30 degrees, wow. e even on a hot summer's day. If it gets to 32, it's sort of it's it's almost on the front page of the newspaper. It, and, the, and exactly, and that's what's so unique about here. Yeah, but but the sun and the light gives us the ability to get the, these amazingly ripe flavors, but under in, in a cool environment, um, so that we. The fruit has, when you eat the fruit off the vines here, it's just incredible. It's an explosion of, of fruit flavor and amazing natural acidity. Well, that's the magic of New Zealand. Mm. Well, thanks again for the tasting. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm.